Hello and welcome to the Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Curtis Song. So Curtis, in season one of The Garage, the first 12 episodes, we went really deep and across all the different spectrum of click to run, the new installation type for Office 365 Pro Plus. Right, and one of the episodes that you and Yoni Kirsch did really stands out, and that was the one about the workarounds. Right, and all of these episodes, if you haven't really caught up and seen all of them, you can check those out. We link to those through season one archive in every blog on Microsoft.com slash garage. But in this episode, we wanted to look at some of the workarounds for frequently requested features, things like being able to deselect apps. We have some, some news and announcements around that. And also around updates and how updates work. So we're gonna talk about that and much more. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, click to run installation using the Office deployment tool for Office 365 Pro Plus is an all or nothing install. You cannot disable unwanted apps. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So recently, we made a lot of new changes to click to run that are really gonna help IT pros. Right, and we heard from a lot of people, a lot of the same common threads. If you think about things that I hear almost every single day, you know, I wanna be able to do things like deselect applications that I That's could do one. when I had the MSI, when I'm using the Office customization tool, or even getting to Catalyst to uninstall or exclude some of the apps from installing. We want to be able to do that and click to run. Right, and we worked with, or I worked with a lot of uh, early adopters to deploy Office 365 Pro Plus, and we heard these concerns all the time. Right, and beyond that, also proxy server support. So that's something else. If I'm behind a proxy, then the streaming, we did a lot of fixes in terms of how we stream the bits down to machines, but since we're passing especially that integrated office, or it's actually got a new name. It's got a new name, uh, office, office click, click to run 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 .exe. Yes. Right. As we pass that to the system account, then some of the proxy configurations go a little bit haywire sometimes, and you can't get the bit streamed down to your hard drive that we really need to do from a click to run install perspective. Right. Exactly, a lot of environments have proxy servers that restrict unauthenticated access outbound. So that's the new change to user mode streaming will make sure it's under the user context. Right, so the initiator of the context, these are things that we learned even back in the old system center days when we needed to yes. be able to get agents installed on machines that would then eventually move into that system context to manage them. And even beyond that, we've done a lot of work in terms of the software updates. Certainly, certainly. So software updates now, we can actually do a little bit more intelligent work in terms of uh, determining the state the machine needs to be in when we apply the updates. So if, if whether we're plugged in or not, it will look at the battery and we'll even resume an update that maybe has failed midway in terms of part of that discovery and download process. So we don't have to re-download the entire update delta package. Right, automatic updates are gonna be a lot more friendly for end users as well. And if you haven't really read up a bit on the way that we do updates and click to run, we are calculating a delta between what you try to deliver to it and what's already on the machine in order to reduce that network bandwidth size. Right, and that's important what you said, it's a calculated delta, which means at most, you're only at most one update away from being current at all times. So let's stop talking about all this stuff and <laughs> show exactly. some of these things in action because I know, and we skipped the PPI and we skipped doing any whiteboarding because we want to get straight to the demos. So let's do that let's right do now. So one of the most uh, one of the most anticipated features of Click to Run is the ability to deselect apps. I'm going to walk through what that looks like here. So I'm on my uh, on my administrator machine here, and I've got the Office deployment tool loaded. A configuration.xml file is open. I've got a couple of new uh, controls here: exclude app ID equals, and I've got access info path and groove. Those are the most commonly heard uh, exclusions that we're getting from people who want to disable certain apps. Now, what I can do is go ahead and run the setup.exe uh, like I would normally with the Office deployment tool. And I would use the configure switch and point to the configuration XML as I normally would to install on behalf of a user as an admin using that tool. Now, we need an updated version of the Office deployment tool, right? Right, so this is going to be a new version of the Office deployment tool and also the bits because the way we manifest all of the builds and the available SKUs, all that stuff needed to change in terms of the builds themselves. So basically any build that is, you know, as of the new version of the Office deployment tool launching uh, will be able to do that. 
Now, now I've kicked off the install command, and I've purposely excluded groove.exe in this case, access and info path. And the reason why I excluded groove.exe is because in some environments you don't want to have uh, data synchronizing between a SharePoint site and maybe a personally owned device. Okay. So by excluding groove, we can also stop the ability to synchronize those folders. So we're going to wait here for a second while these light up. And the nice thing, because I'm using click to run, within seconds I'll wow. have all of my icons light up. And we've probably belabored that quite a bit in terms of installing uh, stuff, jumping out of airplanes and whatnot. But here I can see I've got all of my uh, apps installed on the on the start screen. I've got everything there ready to go. And I can I can check and see whether or not my exclusions actually work. So I'm going to search for access. And you can see that no apps match my search. Great. I want to see you go into the file system, though, to see if access is really gone. Right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna check here too because we're we are using integrated Bing search to check the entire file system Certainly. through here. InfoPath and Groove is also not there, but when I go into the file system, I can go right to the Office folder, right where all the executables are normally housed, and you'll see that I don't even have the executables in that folder. Nice. Access is gone. Uh, Groove in this case is gone, and InfoPath are gone. So even compared to the way App V works in that case, there's no way to even find the executables to execute against them. So it's completely off the system. When I do an update later, it will know those settings have excluded those, those apps that I wanted to exclude, and it won't apply them later, obviously. That's fantastic. That's really great. Right. So even beyond that, we've done a lot of work in terms of how we treat updates, right? Right. So some of the new changes include uh, uh, the compressions getting better. We made uh, big changes to make the, the resume even more improvement or more improved, and also uh, for battery life. And, right? and another thing that we did beyond all of those checks and kind of the logic around updates, the notification experience for users as they get updates. So it used to be kind of a toast process in the lower corner of the screen if you had an update to apply. Now, let's say that user's a serial sleeper. They never actually close <laughs> their Office app. So of course, if those executables haven't been closed, there's no way to update them because there's always an open handle Certainly. against those exes. This will tell the user, hey, there's an update waiting for you. So go ahead and close and reopen your applications to do that. That'll be great. So let's see what the update thing looks like in action, because no a lot problem. of people don't know how the entire update engine looks. So let's go through that process itself. Certainly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first take a look at the scheduled tasks, because automatic updates are kicked off via the task scheduler. Right. So we see we've got here the automatic updates task. I'll just take a look at the properties. Uh, and one thing to note, the triggers, there's a couple of them. It happens in the middle of the night, uh, a few nights a week, but it also happens at logon and uh, repeats every 30 minutes. It waits about 15 minutes after logon and repeats a couple times. So every time the task runs, it checks uh, for the source, the, the cloud, to say, hey, is there a new build? Is there a new build? Mm -hmm. And it will only download something if it's there. So we are going to go next into the registry because I said it actually goes to the cloud to check for the updates. You can specify. I want to check to an internal source. So what I've done is during setup, I decided my internal source path to get updates is going to be a local path, and that writes it to the update URL registry value. Right. So it's going to look for my local C drive to get so this updates. This is important, too, because we can determine where this engine's looking from an update management perspective if we do want to manage the source of where those updates are being pulled from. Right. And now it gives me the ability to test updates before I up, uh, apply them in my environment. Right. So you've got Excel open now. Yeah. I'm going to do a very, very complicated formula. Uh, 2 plus 3 equals 5, just to show that you know, we can keep our data even as an update occurs. Right. We want to make sure that we can resume state and get back right into exactly. that. Exactly. So I'm going to go to uh, File, Account. I'm going to select Updates. And what you'll see is it starts downloading them immediately. And it downloads them in the background. Because I did it through Excel, that's why we saw some user interface. Typically, it's all uh, obscured from the user. Right. So if I go in the file system, under Program Files, Microsoft Office 15, Data Updates. The delta gets cached into this download folder, right? So as right. things are coming down, it goes into this download folder. And again, like you said earlier, it's a calculated delta, so it determines what you have and what you're updating to, and then it just downloads the difference or downloads the deltas. In a compressed form. So we try to keep exactly. the network traffic as small as possible, and even the updates as of Service Pack 1 will be even smaller than they had been prior to Service Pack 1, another request that we get from customers all the time. Certainly. So when it's done, it moves over to the Apply folder. And then I'm going to show you that it still says book one. I haven't saved my, my, uh, my file. I'm going to hit close programs. And Office is going to update. It's going to take me about 10 to 15 seconds. Wow. Yeah. See, that's the great thing. Even click to run updates are faster than they would be compared to MSI and MSP patching. Right. So the updates are done. And hopefully, oh, good. Excel's launching right up away. And you'll see my book one, it says auto saved. I didn't lose any data uh, during the updates. And really, right. it's just as simple as that. It's really great. Right. So all of those enhancements, again, 
added to the logic of how we're doing updates and then the user notifications, all of that should ensure that you stay up to date and you still get to control all of your updates. Another question that we hear a lot in terms of a kind of a misconception is, do I have control over the updates if I'm using Office 365 Pro Plus? You do. As you saw, you actually pointed your updates to the C drive in Certainly. that case. You'll probably want to point them to an internal file share, a owned HTTP or UNC path, but this works uh, to where we can, we can basically publish the updates that we want published. Exactly. It gives the IT group more control over when they want those, that new build, those updates in their environment. Right, but we have one more feature that we want to show that should get a lot of hosters and people doing things like remote desktop services or even shared kiosk machines pretty excited. Let's talk about that. Right, so we got shared computer support, which will really help in like pooled VDI environments or hospitals or call centers or the factory floors where there's uh, computers that are shared by many people. Right, so shared computer activation gives me the ability to basically install Office and under the user's context, it will determine whether or not that user is available to use that software he's licensed in the Office licensing service. So if user one walks up to a machine and he's got valid Office 365 Pro Plus credentials, he can sign in and use Office. But if user two walks up to that machine and he doesn't have a license, he won't be able to use it. From a license management perspective and kind of a software asset management perspective, this gets really easy then to manage yeah, it's, who can it's use it and who easy. can't use it. <clears throat> right, and it works out really well. So let's see this in action. You betcha, let's take a look. So, I have uh, an Azure VM that I'm going to use, but first let's go into the Office 365 portal, and I'll show you that a couple of us are provisioned for Office and some aren't. Right. So, let's show you, show you my girlfriend, uh, Susie Fake Name. Right, She's okay. a totally real person, I swear. So, okay. we're going to go take a, take a look at her, and she has no license, no apps assigned. Right, she's Nothing just assigned basically or... identity in our, in our cloud ID pool. Exactly, so let's take a look at my ID down here and we'll click it and we'll see that I am licensed for everything. I've got the entire E3 suite. Right. So let's close this and now I'm going to log in to my uh, Azure VM and I have RDS installed here. Okay. So I'm just going to remote in here using uh, my credentials first. Right, so now you're getting into a remote server. Now, does this server have like Server 2012 installed on yes, it? Yes, this is Server 2012 R2, and I right. do have the remote desktop services role installed. Right, so you can see right from Server Manager that RDS is actually enabled on the server. So a common request that we get, we can install retail activation Office 365 Pro Plus bits in an RDS server. Right, that's huge. So what I'm going to do is I have Office installed, mm -hmm. uh, but not activated yet. So let's take a look at the config XML that I use to install it. So in the uh, XML file, I called it config shared. We'll see the new property at the bottom, shared computer licensing, licensing with a value of one. Right. That tells me that this, this installation is now enabled for uh, a shared use. And one, one important thing is we can change the licensing type later if we want to from a shared computer license to a real kind of yeah, permanent license that's if great. it's a real physical computer. And the result of setting that is in the registry, we'll see there's a shared computer licensing registry value. And that's the okay. result of enabling that at install time or post install time. Right. So now when I launch Excel, it's going to automatically activate because I've, I'm federated in this environment. And we'll see my name pops up. So I am now activated. I'm using Office. Things are great. Right. But your friend Susie fake name, if she was to log in, what would happen there? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to log back on to my server. And instead of using my credentials, I am going to use my friend Susie fake name. Okay. So let's change, yeah, Susie, and there we go. Now you're logging into a remote desktop server. It could, by Correct. the way, it could be something that might be using a layer of software on top of RDS, like Citrix Zenat, for example. Certainly. Where you're logging in through that. So let me just close this, and now I'm going to open up a document I have saved. There it is on my desktop. And now when I launch it, so Susie Fake Name actually has the rights to view Server Manager, but she can't use Office. She is actually a domain administrator in my environment, but you're right, she can't use Office because right. she's not licensed for it. Right, and so, so that's the, the value. The licensing is actually determined by the Office licensing service when she goes to try to sign in. She won't be able to fire up those applications and use them with full rights, so she won't be able to create or edit documents. So all this is really cool stuff. I think this is going to be really welcome news for IT admins out there deploying Office 365 Pro Plus between uh, everything that we talked about from a deselection or exclusion of apps, the software updates, hopefully you help demystify some yeah. of that, and also uh, everything around, uh, around VDI and, and supporting shared computer. Shared computer. Support.
these changes are really going to help out IT pros. It really helps close the gap between uh, um, the traditional on-prem version of Office. Right, so before we wrap up, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, quick to run installation using the Office deployment tool for Office 365 Pro Plus is an all or nothing install. You cannot disable unwanted apps. So of course the answer was false. You saw it in action. Office deployment tool for Click to Run was able to exclude apps that we wanted to from installing. Right. App deselection, improvements to automatic updates. IT pros are going to love this. Right. And all of this content and more, you should really check out season one. We link to it in every one of our garage posts. Everything on Click to Run that you're going to want to know. Even all the virtualization support options, everything there. And you did a whole series with Dini Mod on Channel 9, right? That's right. It's on MicrosoftVirtualAcademy.com. The course is called Office 365 Pro Plus Deployment for IT Pros. So be sure to check those two things out. But that's about all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. <laughs>